President Joe Biden hosted Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for a state visit Thursday, a sign of growing relations between the U.S. and India as they attempt to counter an increasingly aggressive China. Biden has made deepening defense ties with India a priority. He has offered to collaborate on military technology, even though the U.S. and India lack a formal security alliance. Voice of America reports. The U.S. has been trying to wean India away from its traditional arms dependence on Russia, its largest supplier of weapons for decades. 70% of India's military equipment is of Russian-Soviet origin, a Cold War legacy. The Biden administration is set to okay a deal to allow General Electric to produce jet engines for powering Indian military aircraft. In order for the deal to move forward, Congress must sign off. India is also on track to buy 31 drones made by General Atomics worth slightly over $3 billion, sources told Reuters. The capabilities, whether in terms of mar maritime surveillance and or other operational uh, roles, has proven themselves out over the years. And I think um, that resilient platform and the, the ability of that platform to um, be used by several air forces and navies around the world is testament to the 7 million plus hours that um, has been flown. U.S. Representative Ro Khanna, who represents California's Silicon Valley, says India is poised to capture more technology investment from U.S. companies. I'm hearing that there's a diversification effort. There's not a complete break from China that's unrealistic, uh, and that would really dramatically lower GDP. But there is a view that we shouldn't uh, have all of the eggs in the China basket, that we have to diversify our supply chains. And India is an attractive candidate. But we have to make sure that we continue to not take that for granted, uh, cut through some of the bureaucratic hurdles, make sure that there's transparency and not corruption, make sure that the U.S.-India economic partnership is strong. Indian Prime Minister Modi was scheduled to address a joint session of Congress for the second time in nine years and be the guest of honor at a White House state dinner.